My name is Adriana Lopez. I'm the interim director here. And we are so thrilled to be welcoming Manuel Palos and Alejandra Palos for an artist talk. Manuel Palos is a master sculptor and conservator. He's worked in the Bay Area for over 50 years on projects like the Palace of Fine Arts and the Moscone Center and many, many more, which you'll learn about. No spoilers. And he's also worked for Hollywood star Nicolas Cage, I just found out, so I want to hear more about that. <laughs> Alejandra Palos is his daughter, apprentice, artist, sculptor, and also manages his company, Manuel Palos Sculpture. So also an incredible person to have here interviewing her own father. Such a lovely moment. And um, we're so, so happy to have you here. I do want to just take a moment to mention, uh, we host these artist talks for free. So if you do have the capability to become a member, you can join for as low as $25 today after the talk at the front desk. We do welcome you to join our family and become a supporter of the Mexican Museum. That's it on that for now. Uh, so welcome, and without further ado, we're gonna watch a short video on Manuel Palos's work to start off. My brother and I, we were waiting for the morning because I remember when the sun came up, we had a hole in the window and the sun came in and project into the wall with the people walking outside down. My name is Manuel Palos. Uh, I'm an artist. I born in Mexico. When I was uh, a kid, my brother and I, we used to uh, make our money by doing little figurines. And uh, we used to cook them and paint them and go to the square and sell them for pennies to buy candies, sugar cane, and all kind of goodies. Uh, so that's when, that's when I find out that I was good in using my hands. When we went to the river, we find this special place where we can get the, the clay, you know. And then uh, after we make the rolls, then uh, we cut it in lumps. And that's how many figures we were going to make. And so the first thing we, we, we did, I remember that we, we used to start to roll feet, head, we rolled them up and then we start to put them together. There's a way to handle the, the, you know, the chisel, the hammer, and uh, when I see this, uh, these people using those tools, how they use the tools, and uh, they can they can go into any position and any shape and anything with their own hands. When you're working, you have to go with the, your body, just keep moving, but you got to use your whole body. And that's a, that's a good trick for all the uh, hand carved uh, sculptures. Learn how to do that. Then you can really uh, produce in advance. You can work the whole day that way, having fun.
fingers and, and then and we move down to the feet. Yeah, yes. She's she's getting she's getting happier and happier. Every time I touch her, she feels it. <laughs> and uh, that's a good feeling. When you have the connection between uh, what you're working on and, and yourself, there's a, there's a good feeling that everything is coming on. Good. And when it doesn't, she can feel it too. And uh, I had to stop and, and just talk to her again and let's go. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, that's how these things work. And it, it's the right moment. It's the right time to, to work. It's not just jumping there. It's just, you gotta talk to them first. And when it's the right time, and then uh, things goes better. So when we're talking about time uh, to finish all these pieces, you know, uh, how, how can you get, uh, let's say another, I would like to have another 20, 25 years more, then uh, I can do more of these things, you know. And uh, I'm making a deal would, you know, God, maybe he can give me a credit for another 25 years or so. Then I can finish all these pieces and uh, more and more that I have in mind. So time, time, time. Where can I get more time? about my father's work here in San Francisco. His work is nationwide, but we're going to focus on San Francisco today. So these are some early images of my father. And Bobby, I just have a couple of questions. Can okay. you kind of explain what these photos are about? I can see myself there when I was uh, a little guy, I don't know, wow. 13 or so. <laughs> I was walking in the streets on, on, on Zacatecas, where I, where I born. So, and uh, he's an old man now, this little guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, and it's nice to see, and let's see that photo. My God, 52? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, the other one is, uh, any time I have free in the house or at home, I just sit down and in modeling and mm -hmm. do sculptures. So he's been with me since I was a little, little guy. So I'm so lucky that I can still do it, you know, still doing that. And I guess it's, it's all I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. And try to, to get better and better every time. Who's a young man with you? Little boy. Oh, Salvador? Salvador. Mm -hmm. You know I'm right. Which is he's, his nephew. He's a, he's my nephew. Mm -hmm. So anyway, mm -hmm. and yes, so that's what I, I would like to keep doing it. And I remember my father, he told me uh, one time, so I told him that I, I, I didn't like the, the kind of work that I was doing with him because he was the shoemaker, the best. And uh, I told him, I said, Pa, I, I don't like to do this. Uh, I want to do something else. So he said, okay, that's all I can teach you. Uh, but whatever you do, whatever you go, be the best. Mm -hmm. I never forgot that. And still trying. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, so I've been doing this for a long time. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the Palace of Fine Arts. Okay. And so, Papi, can hmm. you talk a little bit um, about why you came to work on the restoration of the Palace of Fine Arts? What brought you here? Okay. Uh, at that time, uh, my brother and I, we were working in, uh, 
in Los Angeles in the studios in the movie industry. And uh, at that time, this, this one, uh, the Palos Fine Art Restoration started. And, uh, and they, uh, here the city send uh, uh, one of those uh, ads, yeah, and they put it on, on the national, uh, the national uh, newspapers that they need uh, people to, to come and work as an artist. And uh, so there in the studios, they got one of those ads and, and they told everybody, there is a job in San Francisco. If somebody wants to go there, you know, they, there is. So then that's when my brother and I, we decide to come up. And uh, so since then, since then, you know, I, uh, I, I got here, my brother, and then uh, at that time I was, I was married, and uh, my brother was married too, so we both got the, the, the ladies here, and then right after that, boy, everybody started coming here. <laughs> so, so here we are, it's a big, big family now. And, and I have to say that all their family, uh, the ones that we uh, brought her up here, they had the kids. And all these kids, they, they've been working with Which me. are my cousins. Yeah. yeah. So they help me. Every time I have a project or something, uh, they're always there helping me. And they've been helping me in all these big jobs. And, and uh, there is uh, not too many people around to do this kind of work. So we like it that way. Yeah, this is a family tradition. Yes, and, and, and I had to say this also that uh, my daughter, she's, uh, she's, she's sculpting now too. And, and not too many people in the world uh, work in the sculpture mm -hmm. uh, and the stone, especially ladies. And, and she's working on, on the stone now, and marble. Like you saw me there, got a hammer and this, sweats and all that. I love that. I love it. <laughs> so she's, she's, she's doing it. She's doing it. So she's going to keep yes, doing it. Can. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's go back to the pacifying arts a little bit. Um, so you found a mentor there, right? And, yes. and so he. Mm -hmm. He pretty much took you under his wing. Yes, at that Who time, that? Uh, at that time, uh, this uh, this sculpture, uh, uh, he had he, he was the best sculptor around here, and he got the job uh, to do the, the sculpture work. So when I when I met him on the Palo Swine Arts working. He was working in, 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 in some figures, and I was working in another figures. So we got together, and, and boy, we, we did a lot of work. We did a lot of work, and uh, I learned a lot uh, from him. And through him, also, I met many, many uh, artists around here, and uh, so, I kept going, just meeting artists and and uh, going to the the studios. And uh, so since then, I just keep working and meeting new people here. And so I found that it, there was a place for me to to just keep keep doing this kind of work. So here I am. And uh, what did you do after the Palace of Fine Arts? Where did you go work after that? After, after I finished at the Palace Fine Art, then I, uh, I went to work for this uh, company, uh, Western Art Stone, which they, do, they were doing uh, uh, stone work and uh, modeling and molds and all kinds of things. So I was a sculptor there. So I, I worked there for uh, probably 10 or 11 years there. And uh, when I was there, also when I was in the Palace Fine Art, uh, I met uh, good good artists there, and they kind of all were ready by that time, and, and and they liked me a lot, and and they advised me. They they kept telling me, Manuel, you you got to get out of here. You you have to go. 
because we can all now, we cannot teach you anymore. Uh, but you had to go to, to Europe, Italy, some places where you can learn more and uh, because you're good and you got to keep going with that. So uh, that's, uh, since then, uh, then I start to just travel every year uh, to Italy and uh, that was a great experience because there, that's the best place to, to study, to work, to meet the best in the world. So there's, uh, I learned a lot because there, this, uh, this is sculptures, they, they have the commissions from uh, all over the world and this is the place where they go because they have the marble, the help and the tools and everything. So you meet all different, all these uh, artists with different ideas, different techniques and so the, the best, the best in the world. So I was so lucky to learn from them. So I'm still doing it. So, so the, when I can. So the piece to your right, the marble uh, sculpture, you created that in Italy, correct? Wow, well, look, I like this one here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yes. Yeah, no, uh, that's, uh, that's when I was in uh, Tuscany. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm driving up there, and it's so beautiful. Wow. And uh, that, that one there, I just, I just got him out of the stone. It's a I, green marble. It's right? a green, green marble. As, as you can see, it's, it's a flat piece of marble. So um, <coughs> I got the vision. I saw her like that. So it's a, it's a low relief on the, on, on the head. And then I just start to go and just get bit. But in the same piece of stone. So you got to work. And, uh, you know, perspective and all that. How big is that piece? That, that probably would be, uh, I would say, about 13 or 14 inches tall. Mm -hmm. And this uh, wide. And so these other, this other people, these other uh, sculptures, <coughs> this is a black, beautiful black uh, piece of marble. I did it in Italy. Uh, and I see it got because it's such a good piece that I don't want to do anything with that, but just keep it. And the other one also is a special piece that I, I still have that one, these two pieces. Because I, I, when I was working on that one, it's a beautiful red marble. And I was working on that one, and there was an accident. Those accidents happened, and that happened when I almost finished it. Uh, uh, one of the breasts, as you can see, the left side, uh, he, just, he just broke, pulled off. And, and, uh, and uh, that was a, a disaster. But then I started thinking, I'm not going to leave it just like that. So I had the idea, I need to come out so beautiful, that I just cut inside and the marble. Cut inside, went back there, and just got the other breast out. You see? Yeah. So, so now this is one of my best pieces. And everybody loved that. Because it, uh, it just changed completely from classical mm -hmm. to now kind of modern, modern. Very cool. So you didn't just Change. trash it, you just Th made it. That's right, yeah. So what year did you start your company? Year? Yeah, so now we're going into Manuel Paulo's sculpture. What, 80, 80? It was 82. 82. It was 82. 82. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and so tell me a little bit more about that. Why did you want to start your own company? Well, uh, uh, at that time, when I was working uh, in, the, uh, in this uh, company, uh, in Western Arts, yes, mm -hmm. I uh, I met a lot of people before, and when I was working there, and they all knew me, uh, the kind of work that I was doing, and uh, I started to do work for them, and uh, of course, working in the company and doing my own work, and so I was really really busy. And, and more work was coming in because the people knew of, about me and give me more work until I couldn't, I couldn't work for the company anymore. So uh, I told you know, the owner, that I said that I, I'm gonna have to leave because you know, he knew that I was doing my work outside. And uh, so I told him that I was gonna leave. He said, Manuel, uh, you, don't, you don't know what is uh, having a business. Uh, your own business. So it's okay, go. You got your work here. 
because you come back. You're going to come back after you feel, you know, what is it? Yeah. So, uh, so I left. And yes, I, 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 many times I, I thought I might go back because it's not enough work to, you know, keep the business going. And that's all I was doing it. And so, thanks God that I, I was with myself at that time. All I had to do is support my daughter and myself. So sometimes I had money, I, I ate good, and sometimes I didn't have money, so I, I didn't eat too good. <laughs> but I hold on and hold on, and, and little by little I start to, to get more work, more money, bigger and bigger. <laughs> so until I, I felt like I can, I can really do the business, or do the work. Business, I've never been good in business. Uh, my daughter's been helping me on that way, and uh, but I've been lucky. I've been lucky because uh, I got her, and I got my work. I know how to do the work. So the rest, people has been helping me, and that's what I'm doing now, and I'm still doing it. Yeah. So this is the first project that you got. Yes. In, yes. So this, this was is a Neiman Marcus in 1982. So do you want to talk about? Yes. This, this is. Uh, a special, uh, a special uh, uh, project because that was my first big, big job, big responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was by myself, and, uh, but as I said before, I had this, uh, my nephews, Tony, Miguel, uh, Nena, and then my daughter, everybody uh, helped me to not, not to do, well, to do the job, Yes, my nephews uh, helped me to, to do all that work. And uh, what did your nephews do on this well, project? Can you kind of they they helped me to make all these medallions and, mm -hmm. and you know, all the, the the columns, you know, because I had the molds and they had to 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 make the cast the pieces. And I remember one time the architect was pushing because and they were very very late on that. And they were ready to open the, the, the store, and, and, and we haven't finished yet, the, the top part. So anyway, the architect one, that one time came over and he said, Manuel, uh, we got to finish this. How can, how can we do it? I said, look, I got my nephews and everybody's working. He said, well, uh, how can I help you? And we were so busy doing it, uh, he said, I'm willing to work. Tell me what to do, the architect, you know? And, uh, I said, look, I'm busy, but look, go and talk to the little kid there. <laughs> but it, was, it was Tony, he was what? He's right there. Uh, he's here? <laughs> so he was, I don't know, I don't know how old he was, I don't know, 12, 12, 12 years old, 13 years old, and he was casting a plaster, you know, like, uh, and I didn't have time to explain this guy, the architect, what to do. So I said, go and talk to him, he will <laughs> put you to work. <laughs> so he did. He did, and, and, and Tony told him how to do it, and he started to work, because that, that's how bad it was. And, and, and he, after, after this, he wrote a, a, an article in the newspapers, in the newspapers, he, and he said, I never expect a kid a 12 years old telling me what to do. Yeah. And, you know, and he was, he was an architect, and here I am. So that's, that's just something I just remember. Isn't but, yeah. the old city of Paris? That's, that's the old city, city of Paris, Paris. Paris. Yeah. 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 Yes. Hi, I'm Nena. Nena, that's, that's my niece. And I don't have a question as much as I have a comment. So, yes, in fact, it was the city of Paris. Yeah. They built this beautiful building that was built by the new owners of Neiman Marcus. They were, you know, creating their own brand and the image, and they moved the rotunda from the center. I'll just end it back here. <coughs> they moved the rotunda, if anybody recalls, it was right the center. Yeah, I so they moved it to the front. Oh, it's right? Yeah. So everything had to be painstakingly uh, dismantled um, and created from scratch. Wow. And that was my uncle's work. And Tony, you know, being 12 years old, <laughs> was healthy at the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and the architects, the, the firm was Gensler and Associates. That's right. Manette, That's right. Which is still big. They're still, they're still big. They're real big. And they still remember me. Yeah. They should. 
So anyway, that's, that, that was my, my first big job. And after I did that, I said, I'm not scared anymore about it. <laughs> anyway, so then I started to get all these big jobs, big jobs, because I, I knew that I can do it with the help of my, my family and people that I hired too. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, so let's talk about the Pactel building, um, which is on New Montgomery. And the Yelp building. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, the Yelp building. Yeah. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. so, Bobby, let's talk about yeah. uh, the scale model that you did for the Pactel building. Well, first, let's talk about mm. how you got this job. Yes, uh, that was the first. Uh, that was the uh, the the project that it opens uh, the door for me to to show the people and for the people to know who I really was. Because I, uh, they told me they, they were searching for the sculpture, the right sculpture to do this, this project. Because it is a big project. It was a big project. And uh, uh, to this, uh, the Pat Bell, because that, that building is, is, it was the first uh, or the tallest uh, building in San Francisco in those years. So, anyway, what happened is uh, uh, in the 1920s, 24 something, when they build that, uh, they have these uh, this eagles out there, but they were in, in terracotta heavy. So, from the 1925 to the 40s, I think, uh, those eagles start to, to fall apart. Uh, because the reinforcing that they put in behind that was the steel and the steel was cracked, you know, you know, expanding. So the, the, the eagles just start to fall apart, pieces from up there right to the right to the street. So so they, they cleaned them, they took all the eagles out and they left the walls clean. So for many years that was like that until the restoration it was eighty 83 or something. Uh, so anyway, they were looking for the right uh, sculpture to do the eagles again. And uh, I found out that after I finished, because the, the architect told me, said, Manuel, you know, we had three or four uh, sculptures ready to do the job. So we choose you. So, ooh. So I said, oh, well, that means you really check me out. <laughs> and they said, yes, you're the guy. So since then, I, I'm not afraid. Now I can show that I can do it and any, anything, I can, I can do it. Knowing that the people by that time, they, they knew me already who I was. So since then, now uh, at least I, they don't have to check my you know, my work and see if, uh, if it's uh, a Latin, it's a Mexican or whatever, uh, they go by what I can do. By your talent and yes. skill. And here, here after, after I did a scale model, this four feet high, they approved, the city approved it and everybody approved that. So then, then I start to build this uh, full scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the armature, that I had to do in wood. And then on top of that aperture, which is of course I coated them up with plaster and all the wire to hold it. Well, there it is. Uh, I put clay all over and uh, there was uh, three tons of clay. So that thing had to hold all that clay. And uh, there it is. So after I finished with that and approved and everything, then I make molds. A big mold, mm -hmm. and uh, yes and no. What I know the answer, but what did you use as reference? Oh, that? okay. Well, they have uh, they have photos, uh, all photos of, of the eagle. Okay, so I went by by the drawings. Those drawings they were so beautiful because at that time those architects they were drawing and they were uh, artists. 
in those seagulls, they were so good in, in, in the drawings that I followed them. And then they approved it right away. So I used that. And uh, so anyway, th that I finished, I made the molds and made the castings uh, and this uh, material, which is my, my trademark. I, I got the product, deco cast. So I made uh, those seagulls and uh, deco cast, which is uh, reinforced fiberglass. The reinforced fiberglass mm -hmm. with, with, with uh, the real stone surface. The interior yeah. looks like, like sandstone. Yes. So but sand. it's a lighter weight. It's a, it's a lighter weight. Yeah, that was the idea. That was the idea to have uh, the eagles back, but not in terracotta, in different right. material, which which uh, has to be a lightweight. And and so they, mm -hmm. when they gave me the job, they knew that I was capable to do not only the art, but but uh, the 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 castings too, yeah. and and to and to do the whole project, it took me not only the skills to be an artist, uh, but uh, the engineering, say, engineering the, uh, the way how the seagulls are going to be attached to the building. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to create uh, the, the steel frame, stainless steel frame to hold this and be attached to the wall. So, so everything was involved in that. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when they did that, the installation, they had to use a helicopter because it was so high, and there was a, there was an article in the newspaper when uh, when they were lifting this. It, it, there was a windy day, and then the eagle started to, to, to go like that. And, and, and then and then uh, I was there, and I I said, "Oh God, I think they're gonna they're gonna fly away." You know? <laughs> it was fly. even an article that was written, and he says, "I think my eagles are gonna fly away." Yeah. <laughs> well, finally, they, they, they were okay, and everything was okay, so they, they are now. And, and now, they sh see in this photo, they call me, what, uh, I don't know. It's about a maybe year. three years ago. Yes. They, they were doing a restoration. They were doing another restoration because they changed it to be this building, what it is now, I don't know. The Yelp building, right? Yeah. The Yelp building. So they, they call me because they want to be sure that the Eagles, they, if they were okay or were damaged or what, because they, they want to be sure that, that everything was okay. So I got up there and I was nervous because all these years, uh, I never, I never went back and checked them and all that. So I was kind of nervous and see. I hope that I don't find any problems with that. My God, I feel so good. See, I'm, I'm smiling because I <laughs> touched them. Uh, I touched them and they're still the same, exactly the same. So I was food. So anyway, the, the, the photo came out in the newspaper, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very proud of that of that job. Very What's the proud. overall size of those eagles? Like 20 feet? Maybe? Uh, they they about 16, 17 feet. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. yeah. Let's talk about this next project, the Legion of Honor, which Legion is in 1986. Honor, yeah. Well, by that time, by that time that they knew who were, who they were dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I didn't have any problems with that. They gave it to me, and and there there were some artists uh, here, local artists who they complained. They they went to the museum and they and they, they told them why you people are choosing people they are not even American citizens. You know? uh, so and they 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 said we would not go by that. We just go by who can do the job. Okay, so. They give me the job, <laughs> and uh, so that was another big job because uh, I had to go to Paris uh, to take photos of, the, of, of these uh, figures because in Paris is, is uh, the other Legion Honor Museum there, and and they donate this this museum to San Francisco as a you know a donation, but they had to be exactly the same as uh, the one in Paris. So I went there and took photos of all these figures and and then I went by them and restored them and make them new and uh, hey, they are they said that was another big project and it's still the same still there you also made this out of deco cast that's right project. the same material as the eagles you made, you made, you made pieces out of clay and restore them 
take the, the mold. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and recreate them. And that's where you and Vicente help me a lot too. I have photos so you guys. Yeah. So when you say restoration, you didn't like just repair them. You no, I did it. Built them. I built them. Well. Yes, because they were falling apart and then they very danger too because they were falling pieces. Mm -hmm. Because they, they were, uh, the ones in, in Paris, they, they're marble, they're beautiful, well done. But the ones that they donated to the city here, they were they re replicas and they were in cement. Okay, and the same situation, the, 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 the steel reinforcing that they put inside to start to expand and all these uh, figures that start to fall apart in pieces. Mm -hmm. So I have to start. So you repair, and then you take a mold, and then you build a new one. That's right. Yeah. So that's. So a, this that's is about the process, right? Yeah. Okay. As you can see the molds here, the molds of each one. Mm -hmm. So I did a, those, those castings in my, my, my studio. My son in the descending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There they are. That's when I was lifting them. Installation. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's mm -hmm. the story about that Legion Honor Museum, too. So the next big one was for Moscone Center. Moscone, Moscone Center also, uh, there was Kanzler. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were also looking for an artist who can do this type of work and uh, with this kind of material. And I, I was, I am well known, not only because I can do the job, but that I can produce. I do the whole, the whole job, you know. Uh, from the designing and doing the, the sculpture work, and if I had to do a restoration or a production, I can I can do it, that too. So they know that I can do the whole project from the beginning to the end. We, instead, they get two or three companies at the same time, or three type of uh, people who can make molds, castings, and installation. I can take care of the whole thing. So that's, that's another advantage that I have in my business. Okay. And so these are some images of some fireplaces that you've done. You want to explain mm. what these are? Yeah. This, this one here. For the Gallery of Park. Uh, yes, the Gallery of Park. There, there was an hotel where New York uh, now the, the Gallery is now. And there was a hotel there. And uh, the owner, he wanted to do something different from the other fireplace. He said, uh, Manuel, there's a corner. It's 10 by 10, a corner like that. He said, just do something different. You create or do whatever you want to do, but don't, I don't want any of those uh, fancy fireplaces. Just to do your, your own creation. Oh, I was so, so happy when he told me that, because then I, can st I start to play with the, with the, with the the figures, the drawings, the clay, and all that, and I come up with that thing mm -hmm. that I never thought I was going to be able to come up with such a thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, and not, it's, a, it's asymmetrical, you know, so you get the kind of... That's right, yeah, around. because uh, every line here, every line here is different, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Break away from mm -hmm. that classical thing. So this, this uh, fireplace has become uh, uh, one of those uh, postcards from San Francisco. Oh. Yeah, oh. they put it on the postcards. Yeah, San Francisco. What kind of medium is that? What is it? That was, that was in this uh, material, that what we call now GFRC, which is a, a cement, but a reinforced cement. Uh, hollow is not solid, so it's lightweight too. So yeah, that's that's what it is. And so, what about the next photo, the cheetahs? The the cheetahs. This is another fireplace that I did. I don't know, I don't remember where, but uh, you know the customer one. It was wanted, a private. She she loved the the cheetahs so much. So so she said she asked me to if I can do that too. So of course I did the whole thing, the fireplace and then the cheetahs in front. So that's another one of uh, many fireplaces. So this one oh, this is for one. actor Nicholas yes. Cage. You want to talk about yes. this? Yes, yeah, this, this is a long story, but I'm going to make it short. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Nicholas Cage. He become a good friend. Uh, one time he, sh he showed up, I didn't know who he was. He just came into the studio and he was wearing tennis shoes, ribbon pants, and, and baseball cap. And, 
And, uh, but he had a beautiful girl, so I, I said, well, what's, what's going on here, you know? <laughs> and so he came in and he, he asked me, Manuel, uh, somebody told me uh, that, uh, that you can do a dragon for me. I, I have a small Victorian fireplace like this, and I want to put this on top of that, and a stone, I want a stone. So I was busy, and I didn't care about that because it was too small, and, uh, and, and then I, I, I didn't know who it was, and, and I, it didn't look good to me. So I said, <laughs> and so I said I'm going to get this guy out of here quick, because and, and, uh, I was busy. And so I said, look, and I start to joke and kind of dream and get crazy. I said, look, I got a better idea. I can do a, a fireplace for you, but you know your fireplace that you're talking about? It will be the mouth of, of the dragon that I want to do for you. And we can put big paws, wings, tail, going up to the ceiling. That will be your fireplace. He just keep looking at me, and, and, uh, and then he said, okay. I said, hold on a minute. So he went on and talked to the girl and come out, and then with a check, you know, a check. <laughs> a $10,000 check, and it said, here, I'll come back the next Friday at the same time, and you just tell me, what are you talking about? And, <laughs> and, and show me, what are you talking about? And then, I, and then I start to get, well, what's going on here with this guy? You know, $10,000, I never see that guy before, and they just give me $10,000. No way. So I said, sure, 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 yes, no problem. So he left. And I didn't know he was serious at all. So I went out there to the office and I showed it to the girl. I said, look, this guy is just, I told her about it. And so she got a check and she said, where is this guy? Where is this guy? <laughs> and, and she knew who, who he was, you know, Nicholas Sketch and all that. And, and I said, well, you just left. She ran out to see if she can see him. You know? <laughs> so that's how the whole story started. So then I end up doing all my joking, you know, all my dream, or all the crazy things I was talking about. I end up doing it. So and, this is a scale model. And I was, I was looking at this, and this is scary, you know, when, when, when you really get close to that. This is really... Uh, yep. Didn't you use place. children's books as a reference? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then uh, <laughs> well, I had to do a drawing, a big drawing. Uh, of this, because uh, after I found out who it was, I said, oh God, what, what I did, you know? <laughs> and then I end up doing the, all of that. So yes, I use many books, uh, children books, to, to get the, the, the dragons, how they look like, and all that. So that's the scale model that I have to do first for him to approve it and his friends and all that. So they approve that scale model then, then I started to work and pull That was in Mexico, and right? And stone, yeah. He, he likes that, the Mexican uh, volcanic Black rock. Black volcanic stone. Stone. So uh, that's three tons of stone that I had to, to get to do that. So okay. that's the story about that. Yeah. Wow. yeah, that's how I started to put it together, see? Mm -hmm. And this is one of my best carvings, you know, stone carvings. Because I really, I, I really put everything on that, and 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 it's so impressive. Because he, he even put when he put the fire on, we had some parties after, and he got one of those clicks where the click and fire came out of him. <laughs> you, know, you know, so just entertainment. He loves to do that. <laughs> Oh, here's the, here's the installation. Yeah, the installation. Yes. See, I have to use this, the boom, and, and there's one of the pieces there. And that's the house. So I had to, I had to uh, take the door out of the, of the house and one of the windows in order to put this thing inside. And that was a big job because uh, the house now was not ready for this uh, at all. So he said, I don't care, we got to do it. So we had to reinforce the whole uh, basement to hold the weight of that, of the stone. Wow. And, uh, and we had to put, uh, take the wall out and put some steel beams in there to hold the weight of this also this way, not just sitting down, but this way. 
Uh, so he paid more to do all this yes. than, than for the for the cost of this is this from Franklin in, in Franklin between Clay uh, and Washington. He sold the home. He sold it. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't live there anymore. No. <laughs> And so this photo here is of the Hate and Masonic columns. Oh and so this is the before and after. Yeah. This is what it looked like before. And they. Oh my God, look at those colors. But yeah, that's another. That's, that's the right is before. Yeah. It's before and after. Yeah. They're still there. They're still, still there. there. Same, same material. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, this is the, the the emblem of the of the sheriff and, and the city. What is that? And uh, Brian and Brian uh, Bri and Seventh Seventh and Brian. Yeah, Eight fifty Brian. Yes. So I did that from from the batch the, or, or the 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 police. They just give me the one of the batch and then I just go ahead and did the, the full scale. That's about five feet tall. Yeah. Still there, beautiful mm -hmm. job. And so this one is for San Francisco General Hospital, uh, architectural panels. Yeah. So you want to explain about these panels, how you Yes, this, this, uh, that was a special job too, because uh, as I said, you know, they, they knew that I was good for everything because all these windows there, they, they have uh, this glass uh, where they, they uh, how, how do you say that? They put the, the photos in the glass. Yeah. Somehow they did a, a photograph. Of, so all, all photos, they're all people, not all people, but from the 20s. Uh, I don't know who they were. They were some uh, uh, nurses and doctors and all that on the, on the photos. So they there and on those glasses. And they put lights inside. So they, they turn the lights on and all those those photos, the images, they, they, they come up. Yeah. And so this is at Golden Gate Park, this Golden Gate Park. So this is the Phoebe Hearst Fountain. Yes, right? yes. And I did a restoration of this one here. Uh, also, there was, uh, there were so uh, leakings and crackings and all that, so I restored that. And the other one is uh, at the, uh, uh, what is that? The other one? Uh, oh yeah, it's the conservatory. Yeah, the special pots. special pots there with with us. Uh, uh, that's a nice job too, because uh, uh, challenging and all that. And this is the right out fountain. Uh, the music concourse on the gate park. Yes, that was an, uh, that was another good job. And also, they, they, they choose me to do this kind of work. Is that an original piece or did, uh, is that a restoration? It's a restoration. It's a restoration. It's a restoration. It's a restoration. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to build the, the, the snake again and, and uh, the lion. And because the snake broke off the original mm -hmm. piece. Yes. It's, it's there, yeah. It's another thought. And so can you talk about the work that you did for the Halliday building, which yes. is on 130 Sutter? Uh-huh. Well, this, this building is an historical building. And uh, when they did the restoration, they find out that all these decorations, they were in, in uh, metal, thin metal, uh, the one that they used to use before uh, to, for many, many buildings that still build with that type of uh, material, which is, uh, is like a, it's not a sheet metal, but that's a metal that they pound this and, and the steel molds. Some, that's a decoration thing. And uh, that's the way they did it many, many years ago, 1902. And uh, when they did the restoration, they were trying to do, well, the, the city uh, told them they had to use the same, the same kind of material that they, it was there. And, and they tried to find somebody who can still do that kind of work. They couldn't, they couldn't find it. They even went to Paris to see if they have something like that. They couldn't find nothing. So finally they, they, they come to me and they ask me about it and, uh, and they said, we have to use whatever they got left there 
because the city wants to use the same materials. Uh, if you do a restoration, they have to use the same, same kind of techniques and materials. Uh, one of the models, I, I said, I need one of the pieces there. It, uh, they were all gone. So I remodeled one piece because there's, there's two, two kinds of uh, decoration there, two or three. And so I fixed that model and then after I fixed it, like I like knew, then I made a, a, a fiberglass mold, like a steel mold. And that was a good idea because it worked, I saved them and they, they were so happy with me, they happy because I saved them a lot of work and a lot of money because the way I did it, I did the model, I made a mold, and then they took all the old stuff that they had and each piece, each piece, I got a piece, whole piece, and push it into the mold that I did. I push it in and then after I push that in, then I, sh I, I, I cover them up with a new material that I have, uh, my own material. And, and so each of those pieces have some of the, the old material that they have. You satisfied their Yes. Their so, wow, they were so happy with it. <laughs> because they, you know, they use the old stuff, yeah. which is impregnated in, in there. But I find a way of, of using that. And uh, there there is. Okay, yeah. so let's uh, move on to these two life-size sculptures that you did. Can you explain okay. these two? Yes, yes, yes. Robert Pickney. Yes, he has a beautiful house in, uh, in around the Mission. I don't know exactly. It's on Jennery Street, I yes. believe. Yes, mm -hmm. this is... Uh, He's a real estate uh, He's a mogul. real estate guy, yeah. So he, he was... Uh, was a, how do you say that? He want to show off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the ego. Want to show off how he used to look in those years and all that. So I said, fine. Yeah, I can, I can. And, and then he built a, a house too. And he also wanted me to, to do the scale of his, oh my gosh. his building. A statue of himself. That's right. And then he used to uh, play with uh, uh, making tricks and all that with the hat and, and the rabbit. So he got it. Oh, the same. magician. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes. So I put everything that he wanted to be. Yeah. So there's a life size. What life. is that next to it says Adam? Adman. Adman. It says there. Yeah, I think he wrote a book. Yeah. He wrote a book. And oh, so. that's his book. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next photo is for John Sperling, which yes, is this, the president this, of. Yes. Of the University of Phoenix. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. He's the, the founder of the University of Phoenix. So uh, I don't know how, how many years ago, four or five years ago. It was in 2012. Yes. 2012. Uh, also, they, they found me that, that I was the guy to do that kind of work. That work, this bronze. So. Mm. Is that in San Francisco? No, it's in, in Phoenix. It's in oh, Phoenix, it's in yes, Phoenix. on the headquarters of of the university. So he's there in bronze, life size, life size. With, 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 with his dog. He want, he want his dog right next to him because that was his, uh, his company for, uh, his companion for many, many years. So he was a dog too. So I did the, the dog too. So beautiful. And so here, here, um, there's the Aguila, which is the eagle, and uh, this one you donated to your hometown in yes. Tabasco. Yes, in so you want to talk Mexico. about that? I took one of the copies of the eagles there, and it's there in the main square. Look, so I'm proud. The Mexican flag is there, right? <laughs> and they they call they they call a gringa, you know, because it's an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, and 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 the other one. Uh, oh, we have uh, we have in San Francisco a day dedicated. Manuel Palos Day. To me, Manuel Palos Day. So that's that's from the mayor. He gave me that. 
because yeah, all his work in San Francisco. And what is the day Madonna? It's What's August the 11th. The August 11th, August 11th is birthday. Yes. Oh, so don't forget, we have uh, <laughs> <laughs> that day. <laughs> and who was the mayor? Gavin Newsom. Gavin, Gavin Newsom. yes. So now we're going to talk a little bit about his legacy. He also teaches in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We just came back from a retreat, a stone carving retreat. So this is him teaching his students and mm -hmm. some photos of his studio mm -hmm. and home in Puerto Vallarta. Do you want to talk about Puerto Vallarta? Yes. About uh, when I was in, in, in Italy, uh, I found out about uh, the problems that all this, the, the sculptures go through to get uh, stone, tools, where to sleep, where to eat, and all that. So we run in Iran to find a place where we can work there and stay there. So every year that I was there, uh, I was thinking, I said, no, no, this, this, is, this is something that we have to do something about it. So I have property in, in, in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta, and uh, so I, I decided to build a, a studio. Uh, that all the students, all the, any artist that wants to come over and do some work, he will stay in, uh, uh, in the house because I have a big house right next to. Uh, he can stay there, and he can work there. I got stone, I got tools, I got everything there. The 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 the, 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 the artist will come in, and he has everything there. So I've been using this studio for some years, and. I, I take uh, groups of sculptures and students, and and they go and enjoy enjoy the place. And I go a uh, few times in a year too to do some work there. And I want to use it more and more and more. So, so it's plenty to, plenty to do. All we need is, like I said before, time, time. So, let's so you let's also teach in your studio in San Francisco, correct? Yes, I also have classes here in the city. Every Saturday, I have a group of uh, students that come over, and I teach them how to carve stone. And so here is a map of all of his work in San Francisco, and we also have copies of that for you to take home. And um, yeah. so as you can see, there's, there's my probably work more is. now. Yeah, yeah. Every every dot there is a, is a project that I have. Of course, this is a new one. Uh, we have a new one, but uh, yes, we got a lot of work in the city. And this this this. And my then daughter. this is me. This is part of the legacy. So so I am. Uh, um, yeah. I'm honored to carry it on. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> Yes. And my dad is my, my rock, you know, he's my rock and, yeah. and I'm Your honored, teacher. yes, my teacher. And I think that, that us uh, being able to work alongside each other is, is such a great gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just him starting his company and just pushing forward and without fear. That's right. That's and that has taught me to push forward without fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here we are, and we're honored to be here to share his work, his legacy. And he wants more time to complete all his work. And I, I want to thank you for uh, being in, invited here. And uh, I wish I can uh, help more to uh, to help all these so artists, um, especially uh, the youth, the youth, and uh, from Mexico, from wherever. Uh, I know what what they need, and so there's plenty. There's plenty out there that they're looking for, to be somebody. Uh, I, I was I was very lucky. I was very lucky uh, because I uh, I met these wonderful teachers and people, and uh, but I took the advantage of meeting these people and I push I push I push, and uh, that's what I that's what I'm 
what I am. And there are so many artists out there looking for the same, same thing. But some of us, we don't have that opportunities. We don't have these facilities that they, you know, we see those doors closed because we don't have the way to get in there. So if we can open the doors a little bit for them or help them or somebody help them, uh, I'm pretty sure there is plenty uh, good, good uh, artists to come if we help them some way, somehow. So I want to thank uh, this Mexican Museum for inviting me and uh, they can count on me for any help that I can do for them. And so we hope <laughs> And in conclusion, we just want to say uh, that we hope uh, that you leave here feeling inspired, you know, to pursue your dream, whatever it is. And, um, and again, we're very happy that you're here. And we have some promotional materials, uh, some information about classes. We have an upcoming Puerto Ayata retreat. So if you're interested, we also have a studio tour you're in San Francisco if you're interested in coming. You can sign up. And if you have any other questions, you know, we're going to be here for a little bit. And we can talk if you have any you know. questions right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of things to talk. Right okay, now. great. So how many trademark materials do you currently have? What? Right? How many trademark, trademark materials? Uh, trademark, well, there's a, I have two, two trademarks materials uh, because uh, as I said before not only do the art you got to do the whole thing and uh, so I had to find the, the materials to supply all the materials that they they don't use anymore so I got to be able to supply with all those materials so uh, and they've been helping me a lot because all these projects I, I use these materials to besides do the art work I do the the production too. So I had the, the whole patch that way. So this is another advantage that I have. Okay. So, so do you do the engineering as well? Or do you, is you're usually an engineer as, on site, mm -hmm. or are you the engineer when you're hanging these things? Yes, it, yes. Are you working with other people? Yes, because uh, uh, so when I get these jobs, the first thing they, they think is how we're going to put this up. So I got to have that on the package. I have to, uh, you know. Uh, so you, they, figure, they, you do all that too? Yes. They ask me, uh, uh, can you make the, the shop drawings? Can you tell us how do you find the right support? What is, what is, what is, the, right. what is the weight? Projects. What is the weight? What is the material you're going to use? How are you going to anchor into the building? Now? So all that. And I guess every job is a process because it's all different. It's different. They're all different. Each one is yeah. different. So. And that's uh, that so makes you, the job more kind of interesting. Guide the engineer and the architect. That's in right. What direction to go? That's right. And they're gonna build something. Yeah. That's what you're, you're specializing. You tell them how it's done. That's and that's that's correct. They, yeah. The engineer and the architect. The engineers. The engineers. They 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 ask me. You know. They don't know the material. They don't know. No. Yeah. They know how to draw and all that and figure out the weight and all that, but. Uh, but I, I know exactly how that thing is going to work. So they add those on the drawings sometimes. So, all right, well. Oh, and just one last thing I forgot to mention. Uh, there's a book called Acts of Creation. You can buy it on Amazon. And there's a whole chapter on my dad. Yes, yes, and yes. So this is about uh, the dragon in stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take a look at it, it's here. And they said that they are one of the best in the country, so... In the niche. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Thank you so much again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much.